Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is a hybrid heat setup, a dual fuel heat pump and gas furnace setup. So what we're going over is the thermostat wiring for this whole system. We're going over the terminal letters, what they mean, the functions, and what really is going on. So right here, we have a TH Pro 8000 thermostat by Honeywell. This thermostat is capable of a dual fuel which means that the, it controls the heat pump to a certain temperature and after the outdoor ambient temperature gets down too low then the furnace will run. The furnace will run anytime it's below the temperature you set it at in the thermostat. So the furnace will then run if it's below the temperature that you set it at and the heat pump won't run. You never want to have the heat pump running in heat mode and the furnace running in heat mode at the same time because what would happen is the furnace would heat up the air too high and then you're going to have the coil that's after the furnace is going to be trying to reject heat into the air during heat mode and it's going to be unable to and then the heat pump will end up going off on high temperature or high pressure limit so you have this thermostat here that will be capable of doing heat pump uh, multiple different things actually uh, but this would be for a dual fuel system this is a gas furnace control board this is an outdoor temperature sensor right here which is mounted underneath of the electrical electrical compartment of the outdoor unit usually it come it'll come with the thermostat and the thermostat is reading the resistance value of these wires and because of that it'll determine the actual temperature outside so you get this sensor with the thermostat you don't want to just put any sensor in because it may not match up with the thermostat and uh, when you get this it'll come with a usually like a plastic pad with a sticky part on it that'll hold this and then you can stick it up onto the bottom of the outdoor uh, outdoor units electrical compartment this right here is a defrost control board for an outdoor heat pump unit. So this board is in the outdoor unit. All of the power is originating at the furnace. So it's actually originating on R and then it and then it powers the thermostat to R and once it once it lights up the thermostat, it then comes back through the C terminal to the furnace control board. Likewise, you have R going to the defrost board on R, powering the board in 24 volts, and then coming back through the C terminal right over to here. All right, and that closes, basically, it's a closed circuit, so it's able to power the defrost control board. It brings the power back to the 24 volt transformer. So you have the 24 volt transformer in the furnace, which gives you the hot and common for 24 volts. So here we go. We're going to explain why it's wired in this fashion. You have red 24 volts R, okay, going right here. You have a jumper from RC to R because you're controlling both cooling and heating. This thermostat will be capable of doing uh, a separate heating system and well, and a cooling system. So two separate things, like say a boiler and a uh, air conditioner. So if that were the case, you'd pull the jumper out. That's not the case here. It's all one system, heating and cooling system all in one. So you're going to leave that jumper in. The next wire down you have is the O, all right? And that's orange. That's for the reversing valve. So the O comes out of the thermostat and goes into the furnace, but it does not go in the terminal board. It actually gets wire nutted inside the furnace, and then it comes out and goes to the defrost control board of the heat pump. That will power the reversing valve normally in cooling mode of most manufacturers. Uh, Root and Ream have B. So you could set in the program of this thermostat that this terminal here is not O, but it's actually B, which ends up powering the reversing valve in heat mode. You would need to power the reversing valve in heat mode uh, in order to get heat. All right? But for most regular other manufacturers, you're going to power the reversing valve in cooling uh, because they, they figure you want to power the reversing valve in what's not as important. So if the reversing valve were to break, it would break in the non-powered position and heating is more important than cooling.
All right. So that's that's how that goes as more of a necessity in their mind. That's why they figured it that way. So um, the next one, we're just going to go over the terminals here first, and then I'll tell you what connects to what when you're calling on the thermostat. The next one you have is Y, and that's yellow. Y is the compressor. So Y goes from here to here. All right, it's yellow to this Y, Y2, and then it goes from there to Y out here. In the normal just furnace and air conditioning color code, Y usually means cooling. In this case, because it's a heat pump, it means compressor only. So compressor. All right, to there and to there. When this receives a 24-volt signal, it's going to tell the blower motor to turn on at its highest fan speed. Here, here you have G, and that's green. Green goes to here at the G terminal, and when the G terminal receives a 24 volt signal, it's going to turn the blower motor on usually at its lower fan speed, which would normally be heat fan speed. Over here you have aux slash E, and usually what you're going to use is a white wire for that, and it's going to go to the to the W uh, W1 terminal here, and and you're always going to check your manufacturer's wiring instructions. Okay, this is just a furnace control board, all right, there could be multiple furnace control boards. This is a thermostat, you're, you know, you're always going to have to double check yourself to make sure your wiring is correct. But in this case, uh, everything's wired correctly here. Um, but, but you have the aux slash E going to the W, which is the heat for the furnace. And then you also have the W2 here connected to the white as well. I'll explain that in a minute. Now, you have S1 and S2 right here. S1 and S2 are for your outdoor temperature sensor. And what you're going to do is these two wires go to your furnace. They don't go on the terminal board. And then you have this temp sensor located under the electrical compartment of the outdoor unit. It comes in to the furnace, and then you just wire nut it there. I also recommend that you run additional one or two wires just in case, in case one of these were to... Um, either break or accidentally touch each other. So uh, touching each other, like somewhere where the outer jacket is ripped, that would be not good. It could almost turn heat and cooling on at the same time. So if that were to happen, you would have to replace one of the wires with an extra wire. So I always recommend, so in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you have to run eight wires, I would run 10 wires, just in case. Always run yourself one or two extra uh, wires for this. And this is 18 gauge wire. So 18 gauge 10 wire. All right. So this is actually what's happening here now that we went over those terminal letters. In cooling mode for most manufacturers except for Root and Ream, uh, you're going to have R is going to touch O, R is going to touch Y, and R is going to touch G. That will turn cooling on. So you have power then coming from here to the thermostat and then power is touching on the O and it comes out and powers the reversing valve. You have 24 volt power touching the Y. The Y receives a signal on the control board to turn the control board on at its highest fan speed and then you also have the Y signal coming out here to turn the compressor on. And then you have the 24 volt power coming into the thermostat connecting to G and 24 volt signal is received on the furnace control board telling the telling the fan to turn on. So that is now just an on command for the fan instead of running it at its lowest fan speed because you got a 24 volt signal here and here. All right, so that that's for cooling. For heating, you're going to have the 24 volts comes from red to the R and then it's going to touch Y and Y is going to turn the blower motor on at its higher fan speed. And 24 volts is going to come from the R and going to go to the G once again. All right. In that case, you're going to be powering in heat mode. And O is now non-powered. So O is not powered, which means that you are now in heating mode for most general manufacturers. Um, you would have to set it in the program if you wanted to run it as B, which would power this orange wire in uh, in heat mode, all right? But most, most of the time, you're powering the O in cooling mode only. So for heat mode, normally it's going to be red touches Y and G, okay? Now, 
you're going to set this thermostat to run the heat pump until it gets down to a certain outdoor temperature that you're going to set at. And you may set that at 40 degrees, you may set that at 35 degrees, you may set that at maybe around 32 degrees. And I'll give you the scenario for it. If you don't want the defrost cycle to run on your heat pump, then you're going to probably set this to turn off the heat pump at 40 degrees and turn your furnace on anytime you're lower than 40 degrees for heat. If you don't mind your defrost running and you're, you, you're you know, more concerned about the efficiency of it, of the entire system and cost-wise, depending on gas prices and everything, then you're probably going to set it right around 35 degrees. To any time it's below 35 degrees, your furnace will run. Anytime it's above 35 degrees, your, your heat pump will run. So here's the issue. What you have here is you have a timer on your defrost board for your heat pump. Just say you have it set for 90 minutes. So if it runs for 15 minutes and it does that and then it turns off and then it does that six times, it will, it will count a cumulative time of 90 minutes for this timer. Once it does that and it sees that if a DFT sensor is closed, the DFT is the defrost temperature sensor that's mounted on the outdoor unit's liquid line. If that is closed because the liquid line is below 32 degrees, then defrost will occur on the heat pump. So it could be 40 degrees outside and your DFT could be closed. That sensor could be closed because you got to remember that the outdoor coil is going to be much lower in temperature than the outside air. So it's going to be below 32 degrees on the, on the fins when it's 40 degrees outside. So if, it's 30, if you have this set at 35 degrees when you're going to stop the heat pump and turn the furnace on, you may be hitting some defrost cycles in between, in between that 40 degrees outside and 35 degrees outside. All right. You could even set this for 32 in the thermostat to turn off your heat pump and turn on your furnace. But most people agree it's right around about 35 degrees for efficiency wise. So that's how that does. That's how that does that. All right. And you can check out uh, my other videos in reference to other thermostat wiring and um, the defrost control board and things like that. Now, when it does go into defrost mode, you're going to have a 24 volt power wire come out from this board, you know, from the red. It's going to start here, go to R, then it's going to come out W2 when defrost is occurring. And it's going to power the furnace. So it's going to turn the furnace on at the W terminal. What's happening during defrost mode is the fins have, would likely have frost on them. And so what's happening is your reversing valve, uh, for most manufacturers except for Ruterine, uh, is going to power itself. And then what's going to happen is cooling mode occurs. So now you have the refrigerant running in cooling mode, but the outdoor fan is not running. So what's happening is those fins on the outside unit are starting to get real hot. It's trying to reject heat. And by doing so, uh, it's actually melting any ice or frost that's on there. In the meanwhile, in the evaporator quill in the indoor unit, that is getting cooler. All right. So it is okay during that time when the indoor unit in the indoor coil during defrost is cool for your furnace to run hot air through it. It is not okay ever to run a gas furnace while a heat pump is running in heat mode. Okay, that would that would increase the pressures and temperatures too high on the outdoor unit and it would go off on a high limit. So so that is the only time that the gas furnace would run on a dual fuel system um, while the heat pump is running is running in cooling mode with the outdoor fan off. Once that DFT uh, reaches a temperature in the mid 60s, it's going to then open back up again and the heat pump will then turn into uh, heat mode again okay so the DFT is mounted on the fins outside and when those fins get get hot meaning it's way above freezing that means that all of the fins must be must have melted off uh, melted off the ice then the defrost mode will end and everything can go back into normal operation again where the heat pump is running and the furnace is not running and then uh, things can move on from there. But anyway, that's the general rundown of how to wire 
a dual fuel or hybrid heat pump system. All right, but I do recommend checking all of your manufa manufacturer's wiring instructions in order to trace all these wires out. This is just a general rundown of how it all works. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.